I have a story to tell you on how being late for a communications law class actually started a career. And it goes like this. It's a rainy November morning, and I'm late for communications law class. So I jump in my silver Pontiac, and I go driving down the road. But I didn't get very far. You see, I was about to run out of gas, so I pulled into a convenience store, pulled up to the pumps, thinking I'm going to get a few dollars worth of gas. And as I was looking out, I looked over to the right, and I saw this. <laughs> well, I made three images. Uh, two of them were terrible. One was bad. So I took the bad image into the dark room, and I made a print, worked on it for a long time. And at the encouragement of a friend of mine, I went down to the uh, local newspaper, introduced myself to the city editor, and said, I made this photo today. Would you be interested in publishing it? So he looked at it, and then he looked at me, and then he looked at it again, and he smiled, and he said, yes. I learned something that day. I learned that I had a voice and it was probably going to come in the way of photographs. So I got an internship, went to work at a newspaper, was driving down a long country road, thinking to myself that I should address all social issues with my camera because people would be interested in them. And as I'm driving down the road, the most asked question of mankind appeared in front of me. Well, this might sound a little bit crazy, but yesterday I photographed myself without being in the frame. I believe that we never wander too far from our past. And this assumption is based on the famous quote by Ansel Adams, who said, there's two people in every photograph. For me, it's the subject and the photographer. You see, I often go to places that I've never been before, and I meet people through the power of a lens. Often these people become subjects of my photographs, and I have to find common ground in the matter of seconds. You see, it's common ground that gives my photographs power. I also believe that the still photograph is one of the strongest communication elements in the world. Many great social issues are addressed by documentary photos. Wars, poverty, child labor, are all addressed by photojournalists, sometimes at great personal risk. The great famous war photographer, Robert Capa, once said that if your photographs aren't good enough, you're not close enough. You see, Capa lived this statement and was eventually killed on the battlefield. But Capa knew something. Capa knew that in order to tell a story in photographs, one has to live a story. My photographs are a combination of the photographer's background and the subject's present day. One collection of photographs I have are on, from the Dominican Republic on baseball. View number one, the photographer. I love baseball. I used to go out to the front of my house and I had a block porch and I'd take a baseball and a torn glove and I would throw the ball against the, the block porch and I would catch it. It would rebound back and I'd plant the back foot and I would throw again and I would catch it. And I would do this again and again and again. I often wondered, because the ball would make a noise when it came off the wall, and sometimes the neighbors would come out and stand in their front yards and look at me. I just wondered what they were thinking about this crazy kid that would play baseball no matter what. You see, I had two goals. One was to be a photographer. The other was to play third base for the Braves. That didn't work out too well. But in the afternoon, I would grab a bat, and I would try to hold it like Rico Cardi, or maybe feel the ball like the Alou brothers. You see, they were from the Dominican Republic, and they played the game differently. They had heart and hustle, and I just loved it. View number two, the subjects. Imagine for a minute being a baseball hitter 
and standing on a field full of rocks. Every time the ball meets the bat, there's a thud. It's the kind of sound that a baseball player never wants to hear because it represents a poor swing, maybe a miss hit. But this is not an unskilled ball player. This is a young man from the Dominican Republic, and he has a goal. He has a goal of making the majors. And he knows that the only way he's going to make it is to master this game. You see, the Dominican Republic produces about 11% of all Major League Baseball players. Many of these players come from fields surrounded by sugar cane. And given a choice of playing baseball or working in the fields, they choose the game. Every Major League Baseball team has an academy in the Dominican Republic. You see, baseball in the Dominican Republic is played at a passion and level not seen at most fields in the United States. It's more than a game there. It's more than a game. It's more about life because they know that possibly the only way they're going to make it is to play this game and to master it. Another collection of photos I have are out of Central America. View number one, the photographer. I often get asked why I photograph in Central America. Here's the emotional reason. In 1999, I had an assignment to photograph the United States military on a humanitarian mission in El Salvador. El Salvador had been hit by a major hurricane and there was damage, lots of damage. The military was there to help rebuild homes and schools, repair roads. It was Father's Day week, so I called up my dad and I said, hey, I'm going to El Salvador tomorrow. I'll catch you when I get back. He said two things to me. He said, be safe, make a lot of great photos. He never commented on my photos, never. So I boarded the plane and took off. Landed in El Salvador. As soon as the plane landed and the jet door opened, I heard this voice. And it was an officer in the military, and he was screaming my name. On the second William Weeks, I answered, thinking, well, he's got a truck. It's got air conditioning. Maybe I'll get to ride with him. I am a member of the press. No, no special ride. He was to tell me that my dad had had a major stroke, was unresponsive, and I was to return on the next flight. You see, it's a place that you never want to be as a journalist. It's an unfinished assignment. But for a son, it was an unfulfilled request to make a great photo. I promised myself I would return. And with the help of several NGOs like BMDMI and Square International and other news organizations, I've been able to return. And every time that plane lands and that door opens, I can hear that major's voice. You know, it's a reminder. It's a reminder that every single image is important. Every assignment needs to be finished. View number two the subjects. In the 1980s, five countries in Central America came together to sign a peace agreement. The agreement was to end the wars of Central America and provide human rights for the, for the people. You see, the wars of the 80s had killed thousands, and even more were displaced, was displaced, many of them retreating to the mountains for safety. Many of them still live there today. You see, this project is simple. It focuses on the people, their environment, the quieter times. It's not a testament of war. It's not a document of death. It's a testament to the faith and family of the people in Central America. And when I look at these photos, it just stops me. And here's why. In the 1960s, 
I grew up in a small home. The home was a, was a shell home. It was a home that cost about $3,000 to build. And being a shell home meant that the outside of the home was finished. But the inside wasn't. No heat. No air conditioning. No walls. Just two by fours laced with electrical wiring and pipes. Sometimes I would sit in the corner of the house. I'd watch the light as it filtered past the wall and the dust would dance across the light. It captured me. You see, I had no idea that this would be so important to me and my life and my photographs, but here it is, and it's one of my earliest memories. You see, I worked hard, went to university, made a career out of photojournalism, often did stories about people who had similar backgrounds. It was hard, I loved it, and it hurt. For example, let me introduce you to Michaela and her son Samuel. They live in the center of Guatemala City in a small dirt room floor house. And in the rainy season, the floor is often covered with water. You see, when I walked into this house, there was an old friend there, the light. The light that I'd seen in my childhood home was here as it filtered through the window and danced across my lens and separated Michaela from a sleeping area she shared with seven other people. You see, it's that moment. It's that moment where the photographer's past meets the present of the subject. It gives it the visual enrichment that allows one to reach out and touch the world. So did you catch it? Yeah, there's more than two people in every photo. The third is you. You're the one that can make a difference. You can volunteer, you can participate, you can be involved. You can do something. See, some of the greatest photographs in the world that represent some of the major social issues are often hung on the walls and supported by the smallest of a nail. Be the nail. Make a difference. You see, my photographs are my autobiography. They show where I've been and who I've met. But if you dig deeper, you'll find an understanding of the photographer with social politics and human rights at its core. You see, in the end, I am always photographing myself. Thank you.